Hey, hey, people. Sorry for uh, being a few minutes late there. Got a phone call right as the stream was about to go live. So, uh, or right as I was about to have to go live. So, unfortunate, but I'm here now. And after a great deal of trouble yesterday, trying to get my stream uh, software to work, I am now finally able to continue playing. Uh, I don't know what that sound was that just came out of my phone, but I uh, don't appreciate it, phone. All right. Anyway, today the goal is just to get through the Nashkel Mines. So let's start by going south. We'll actually pick up the quest from Prism before we get down there. Although I don't plan on doing it just yet. Here he is. Or not Prism, Ublek. The quest is about Prism, I think. So basically this guy is just uh, misrecognizing us as... Uh, Grey Wolf, this famed mercenary. We are not uh, Grey Wolf, but uh, we are happy to do some mercenary work. And for not lying, we got an extra point of rep. So yeah, he gives us a bounty for a local artist named Prism who made off with a couple of emeralds. The primary thing they want is for us to give the to get the emeralds back. They don't really care what happens to Prism. Through the mines we go. I love Sinjak's voice actor. I don't know what it is about his voice, but it is just so good. And it's it's from the enhanced edition. This is not something that occurred in the normal game, and it's still just so gorgeous sounding.
they may have done it before, but they probably had more help, and uh, they also probably didn't have to deal with me as well. I say as I miss. Actually, you know what? He's got a personal vendetta against them. I'll let him deal with them. All right, now I'll help. a fun little encounter and it's uh while i'm not sure i like the enhanced editions adding a whole bunch of powerful gear early on uh you can get a plus one small shield in that fight which is one of the earliest you can get places you can get a small shield uh magical one and i must say i do appreciate it of course this run it's of no use to us but that's beside the point So the goal with the stream really is just to just to get the Nashkel mines done. It's a short stream. It's been kind of a I won't bore you with the details, but it's been a, a tough day, and so I just want to do a little gaming and then sign off. So basically these uh, miners are saying that there are little demons in the shadows attacking the miners. Not really uh, very likely, I would have to say. But who knows? Oh, kobold. Oh, gosh dang it. Ugh. That's why I leave the quick loot option off, because I just instinctively pick stuff up if I don't. Anyway. Uh, why did I open that? I don't know. Uh... So if we look up here... No, nope, no, never mind. There isn't actually, uh, the bit of dialogue I thought passed had not passed, so, tragic.
So that guy just wants us to give a dagger, return a dagger to one of the other miners, which we can do. After all, that's uh, a quest item, so we can pick it up. No harm. And another kobold. So that guy says there's a dragon in the mines. Uh, a bold statement. So that guy said he had a conversation with the ghosts that were uh, that are haunting the mine. As you can see, the uh, miners don't really seem to know what's going on. They all have their own theories. So this guy actually calls them the Yipping Demons. And then funnily enough, kobolds pop up. Uh, not exactly what I would call a demon, but I suppose to a peasant, there's some threat there. Fortunately, between the fact that we are vastly overleveled and the fact that these are kobolds, uh, we are absolutely trashing them. A single s solid punch in the uh, square in the jaw and they go down. So this guy, Kylie, the one we had to give the dagger back to, he actually knows that it is kobolds, definitively. Um, not that we hadn't already figured that out, but confirmation, I guess.
It's odd that it looks like an undermine shaft there, but you can't actually go down it. Alright, I'll stop talking to these miners. They keep saying the same thing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I think the only way I can actually miss these guys is if I critically miss. So that should tell you just how bad it is when I do miss. Well, he's rather aggressive. We're just an adventurer. Come on now. Fortunately, these are not Kobold Commandos like we thought back in the Firewine Ruins. Now, if these were all Kobold Commandos, then we might have a serious situation on our hands. Or at least something worth fighting. I get that the guards are on edge, but they're being very aggressive. All threatening us like this. We actually need to get something off of these guys' corpse. There it is. Vial of Mysterious Liquid. That's actually a quest item, so we can pick it up. And alas, this appears to be... Joseph's Greenstone Ring. Those of you who tuned in last time will remember that uh, we met a woman who was asking us to find out where her husband, who was a miner, had uh, gone. Apologies for the text tone all of a sudden. I didn't realize that was on.
So far, it doesn't seem like there's too much of interest here. Then again, since we can't pick up any items, <laughs> is there ever? Now keep in mind that this uh, dungeon is a uh, the first major point in the story, like the first story dungeon. So the fact that we are currently uh, about six levels higher than expected does definitely affect the difficulty. Little meat grinder. Kobold meat grinder. That's a burger I don't want. I've actually never had lizard meat. I wonder if that would be a decent meat type. I feel like it would be kind of stringy or tough. Sinewy and muscly or something. That could be wrong, but seems like it. Plus, you'd have to have a pretty big lizard to actually have enough substance to eat. Apart from like a Komodo dragon, I can't think of too many lizards that are big enough to really make a meal. So yeah, between the fact that we hit so hard and our stealth, we are just blowing through these guys. Even uh, when we've got, you know, oh, it's a spider. Oh, it's still dead. Although we did get poison just now, so that's not great. Definitely not great here. We have 80 hit points, though, and I think we were almost at max when we got the poison, so we should, assuming I don't get hit by too many traps, uh, be able to tank the poison. We'll have to see, though. Oh, yeah, we, ta we tanked it just fine. We still have over half our HP. Now, I said the stream was going to be primarily just getting through the Nashkel mines, but we're mowing through it pretty fast, which I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised by, all things considered. But uh, if we get done, I still feel like there's plenty of stream time left. I'll probably go ahead and clean up some of the remaining areas that we did actually miss out on that I didn't realize we had not gone to, like uh, Olcaster and uh, the carnival, the Nashkel carnival, things like that. Not to mention the area surrounding the mines. And there's a trap. Yeah, there's that trap there that I don't really think you can dodge. Fortunately, it didn't hit us very hard.
And speaking of those Kobold Commandos, they had exactly one. Who did give us a good solid hit, but uh, not enough. It's actually funny, these great oozes, if I remember correctly, are incredibly resilient. They take like half damage from most damage types, except for bludgeoning. So they're incredibly dangerous unless you're, you know, a monk. Now, can we take a rest here? Shockingly, yes. Okay, I, I didn't expect that, honestly. At least not first try. <laughs> Woof. So long, kobolds. So this guy is basically assuming that we're someone sent by his boss to deal with him. And he's very upset by this. But we're lawful good. We're just going to be like, uh, no, that's not that's not correct. But you're still in danger. Yeah, this this uh, fight's kind of a joke at this level, even with just one of us. Plus the skeletons, which, just like the Grey Oozes we fought outside, uh, they can be dangerous because they are resistant to all forms of damage besides bludgeoning, but it doesn't matter because we use our fists. So, oh well, there they go. Now let's see here. That's a quest item. Oh, there aren't actually aren't any quest items in the chest besides that. All right. Uh, this guy has his holy symbol and some notes and some really nice equipment that we can't use. So a little story cutscene there. And then let's go talk to this guy. It was unbearable waking each morn to the mud and rock instead of the rising sun. 
I am Zan, a grey cloak of Everesca, and as proficient in the ways of magic as any man can be. That's a blatant lie. If he was, he would be a level 20 or even 40 wizard. He is not. But, uh, going back to what he's saying. If you be enemies of Molahe, I would join your cause, hopeless though it is. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, this guy's a real, real downer. Real ray of sunshine. But, uh, we're, this is a solo run, so we cannot have him join us. We'll ask him why he's here. And it turns out he's actually was sent here to find out what was going on. He's one of the adventurers, or the adventurer, that some of the miners and other people have talked about being sent in to investigate the lot. Uh, quest item. Basically, it's just the fact that it's his weapon. Uh, it's a moon blade, which basically means it is magically tied to him as a result of his bloodline. No one else can wield it. It's incredibly powerful, but the only person who can use it is a wizard. So, not particularly helpful. Plus three magic item or not. It's unfortunate, really. It would be so cool if it was in the hands of someone that didn't completely suck. Unfortunately, it does. So, we walked back out, and we actually popped out here. This uh, little cave where it says, you can see that it's collapsed a little further in. You can't go back that way. Uh, yeah, we've been to this area before. This was where the assassin fight was, and normally that's the whole idea. You complete the... Mulhay fight and the Nashco Mines, and then you immediately have a challenging uh, assassin fight right afterwards. Unfortunately, we've already... Well, unfortunately for the assassins, that is. We've already dealt with it, so... Eh, moving on. No big deal. With that in mind, let's head back to Nashco. And it is very much nighttime. That's unfortunate, really, but such is life. So we brought back Joseph's wife's ring, or well, Joseph's wife's, Joseph's ring to Joseph's wife. That was a hard sentence to say. Uh, unfortunately, there's no reward for the quest besides uh, money, or excuse me, besides experience which is actually the only reward that we can make you good use of. So I'm not complaining. 800 XP is not a lot, but it is still inching us ever closer to that juicy level nine when we get magical fists. And while we're on our way, let's talk to the mayor. So he's thanking us for dealing with the mines, gives us a bunch of money. Uh, thanks, I guess. We can't really use it, but sure. Uh, and then we also have this vial of liquid. And he tells us to take it to Thunderhammer, uh, Fuerim Thunderhammer, of the Thunderhammer Smithy up in Baragost. Which is yet another quest. Not one that benefits us, really, I don't believe, but it is a quest. There may, might be some XP involved. Uh, so here we have yet another assassin. So I guess we'll go punch him in the face, like we've been doing. Oh.
This is a really ballsy commoner, considering Rasad just helped me kill an assassin in, well, I was about to say broad daylight. It's broad nighttime? Look, point is, asking a someone who clearly knows how to kill people with their fists to, uh, quote, take a poke at you, uh, not very smart. Yeah, that dialogue was made a whole lot weirder by the fact that uh, I had the battle music playing the whole time. <laughs> really wish that hadn't been done, but thanks, game. Uh, yeah, if the dialogue had not initiated, I would have uh, mentioned how I tried using Stunning Blow. Uh, it wasn't very useful early on because we couldn't actually hurt uh, Nimble. We couldn't hit him directly because of his mirror image. But once we got it down, I tried triggering it only to end up critting him for, what was it, 42 damage? Uh, let's see. Here. Yeah. He took a hit for 10 damage from Rasad and then took a massive crit from us for 42 damage. Yeesh. So much for my attempt at uh, tactics. We'll take a quick nap. And then let's see here. So the reason I talked to that shopkeeper is because he actually gave us a quest to get a winter wolf pelt. Which I don't believe is particularly useful. Um, he's eager to buy them. So he buys them for twice their value. Which is great. Except for the fact that we can't use money. I do believe we may get some, uh, oh, what's it called? Some XP for complete the quest, however. And you may notice after beating, um, uh, Mullahay, we did actually end up beginning chapter three. Uh, so chapter two was exactly three quests long. <laughs> Not the biggest, qu uh, chapter. Now, of course, they don't expect you to complete it quite so quickly. At least, I would assume. But, uh, we did. <laughs> Alright, so let's head back to the mines real quick. Well, you know what, we'll take a look at the carnival and then we'll head back to the mines. Because there is all the area surrounding stuff in the mines that is of value to us. But we'll go ahead and clear out the carnival first, just because it doesn't take any travel time. It's zero hours away, considering it's a carnival set up right outside town. Big shock. So this guy sells uh, bad potions. Basically, they're very powerful magical potions that, if I remember correctly, they give you an incredible benefit and also a equally incredible negative. The interesting thing is, he sells them for 50 gold apiece, and if you buy them, 
you can then sell them to any merchant that buys potions for, I want to say, either 100 or 200 gold apiece. So you make a profit, a pretty decent one, off of them if you are to buy them. But... Yeah, we, we don't need the potions. So this is an interesting uh, tint. I think they've removed the obvious references. Yeah, they just have this kind of vague, the Black Lotus that expands your mind, you should try sometime. Uh, all these people are high off of this drug called Black Lotus. I want to say it's a fairly classic Forgotten Realms uh, narcotic, but I'm I don't I don't know for sure. Hey, medical man. Welcome to the chat. We've cleared the exterior of the... Oh. Uh, well, medical man, this game is... Well, to give you a basic synopsis, your character was raised in a walled library city called Candlekeep, uh, and your foster father was a guy named Garion. When you turned, I believe it's 21, uh, not on your birthday, but around, during your 21st year, Garion said, okay, hey, we gotta go right now, and you're like, uh, okay, all right, why? And he goes, no time to tell you, to explain, I'll tell you later. And so you leave the town, and then uh, as y'all are traveling away from Candlekeep, your dad gets, your foster father, gets killed uh, when some people try to kill you. Uh, and they specifically want you, and you don't know why. Uh, but your foster father tells you to run, you do so, and they kill him after he puts up a startlingly good fight. He's actually a very powerful wizard. Um... And then you were left out in the wilderness with no clue what's going on. And you just kind of try and figure out what the deal is, why those people wanted you, uh, get your revenge if you want, all that jazz. Uh, this is a challenge run I'm doing, so it's a, it's a normal D&D &D game uh, where you've got, you know, fighter, cleric, r mage, uh, rogue, all those different classes. And this character specifically is a monk, so, you know, punches and kicks, martial arts type deal. 
And this is a challenge run where it is a poverty run. I'm not allowed to use any equipment. And speaking of which, let me drop these items that I've picked up along the way that I don't need. That I'm technically not allowed to have, but they got put in my inventory for reasons. Um, these I'm allowed to keep because they're quest items. But yeah, I am currently just walking around trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, get stronger specifically because as this is a challenge run, I need to gain a lot of levels to make up for the fact I don't have any equipment. So this guy uh, has an exploding ogre as part of his carnival show. Pretty nifty. Let's let's see if he'll do it again. Nifty. Unfortunately, if we ask him to do it a third time. The ogre gets tired of having to explode uh, and appears wanting to attack. If he had just exploded one more time, we would have uh, let him go, but unfortunately. Dang it. That guy picks your pockets, and you can kill him if you're fast enough, but we were not. So unfortunately, he got away with our money. Not that we need the money, but it's still irritating. If we had been able to kill him, we would have gotten some more XP. So these are all just carnival tents with different games you can play. Although it's not, they're not particularly complex, but they exist. So this guy is basically threatening this chick, saying she's a witch, which is funny because he's also a magic user. So we make fun of him and say that that's stupid and to stop threatening her, and he decides to attack us. Well, his horror didn't work on us, and our stunning blow did not uh, was not necessary, but hey, we had it at least. So she explains that that dude was an old enemy who has caused her and her family a great deal of pain over the years. And if we had not walked in, she would have been killed. And we're just going to say, nah, we're good. We don't need anything as a reward. So she gives us a potion of heroism, which is not a quest item, so we just had to drop it. Appreciate it, lady, but unfortunately, can't use it. So off we go. Come one, come all! Take a look at the stone warrior maiden! How long has she been trapped in this petrified form? No one knows! Be the first to learn for the mere price of 500 gold. For that small amount of money, I shall give you a magic scroll, and with this scroll you can release the maiden from her stone prison. 
Think of the gratitude she would feel to her saviors. Perhaps she's a princess from some far-off land, or maybe a powerful sorceress in search of a concubine. You can't afford not to know. Buy the scroll! Uh... Mm. You know what? Why not? So, basically, this is... He's... His offer is legitimate, but he's massively jacking up the price of a stoned flesh scroll. But, I mean, just from quests alone, we have over 7,000. Well, we had 8,000 before we bought the scroll. Uh, which we can't even use. So, why not? We'll, we'll use it. So she's actually a follower that you can get in your party. She's a war priest, uh, a barbarian war priest, and she's really cool. I like Branwen a lot. She's one of my uh, more preferred companions. Uh, unfortunately, I am not going to accept her services because this is a solo run, and I, I can't have any party members, unfortunately. But hey, we did a good deed. We released her from her stone prison. Yeah, I know, Medical Man. It sounds like a great deal, doesn't it? Fun funnily enough, you can actually buy stone to flesh scrolls from temples elsewhere in the game for, I think, five times less, like a fifth of the cost. Uh, he massively jacks up the price of those scrolls. But hey, you know, it's it's something. We just have enough cash that it's whatever, so. Cash that we can't use in any other way due to our restrictions. So I'm just clearing up the fog of war like I always do, revealing the entire map. I don't remember if there are any other tents. I know there are tents that sell equipment. Weapons, armor, potions, those sorts of things. Which we can't actually use. Because we can't buy anything. But... Well, we can't buy, like, those sorts of items anyway. I'm not sure there's anything else here for us. I was hoping maybe we'd run across a wild bear or something, just so we'd have something else to fight for a little bit of extra XP. But it looks like this area is pretty unusually tame. Normally when you get to the northern part of this map, there's some ogres or something that will attack you, but not today, it seems. Not today. Did we go in here? We did not. Yeah, this is the weapon merchant. Nothing of use for us here. Oh, am I stuck? Well, I don't know what happened there, but... Whatever. Yeah, this guy's another merchant. I think he's the one that sells magic gear. Which is actually, he sells a couple of valuable items. Yeah, and another merchant. Yeah, we've seen everything here. I'm pretty darn sure. Yeah. Alright, well, hey. We did a good deed. We didn't get any reward for it. We basically just wasted 500 gold, but such is life. We did get a little bit of XP in the area, just from fighting, like, the ogre and stuff. And that wizard. Alright, so back here we are. Let me actually save and take a rest, just because I hate playing super late at night. In the dark, is just you can't make out anything. Uh, 
Aha, I can't continue. Gosh dang it. Oh my gosh, I keep going the wrong way. So our goals right now are to complete these quests, as well as the quest from, well actually Prism of the Sculptors is peering on both Chapter 3 and Chapter 2. But, complete Prism of the Sculptor, do the Winter Wolf pelts, and get the Vial of Mysterious Liquid to uh, Fuerum over in Baragost. And then we're planning on going and taking a look over at Olcaster. Since I've missed that area earlier, and if I can find somebody that sells flesh to stone, or I'm sorry, stone to flesh scrolls, there's actually one other person we can save that's in a similar situation to Branwen. I forgot about her earlier, um, although I don't think we had enough money at the time to actually help her, but we definitely do now. And I think there's an actual reward for helping her. So this guy thinks we're connected. Uh, what is with people mistaking us for either being Grey Wolf or being connected to Grey Wolf? I don't know. Either way, this guy thinks we are working with the mercenary Grey Wolf. We're going to tell him no. And he just wants us to guard this place while he finishes his sculpture. But we'll, we'll let him finish. Our job is to recover those emeralds, but we can wait. So here's Grey Wolf, the actual mercenary that we keep hearing about and being mistaken for. I don't know how they keep mistaking a human wearing armor with an orc in clothing, but whatever. So we're just going to be like, why not let him finish? What harm can it do? And he does not appreciate that. So he's going to pick a fight with us. And he's not a joke. Um, I mean, he's definitely not a threat to us, because we're so overleveled, but he has the best longsword in the game. So I mean, if you take a look at the corpse, that magic longsword right there is the strongest one in the game. But, unfortunately for him, it's not good enough. So, the sculptor is asking us to please leave the gems that we're supposed to recover in her eyes. As you can see, they're in there. Uh, between stealing the gems and fleeing and the process of basically crafting the sculpture overnight, this guy is just straight up passed out and died. Awkward. But, hey, not my problem. His statue, his sculpture is very nice and all, but we have to move on. Fun fact, uh, the woman that he met that inspired him to do this is named Elisim. And for those of you who have played the sequel to this game, Baldur's Gate 2, you realize that that's actually a fairly major character from that game. Um... It's, there's a lot of references in this game to its sequel. They knew they were making the sequel and had the plot and everything figured out before they made this one clearly. It will not be the last reference to the sequel that we get. I'll say that. But now we'll just go ahead and clear out the rest of the area. Make sure we find everything. I do think there's one more like special encounter here. 
don't remember what it is, but I think there is one. Plus all the little, like, the kobold fight we just had just now, which... <laughs> It happened so quickly and was over with so quickly, I didn't even think to comment on it. At this point, weak creatures like that, our character just kind of blitzes through on autopilot, and I don't have to think about it. Not that it was ever really all that difficult to begin with. I mean, they're just kobolds. But now they certainly aren't a threat. And in here we have some uh, random war dogs. Because, you know, that's what you expect to find when you enter a warehouse. Random war dogs. I wonder if they were guard dogs or if they were just wild beasts that were had gotten into the warehouse. They were probably guard dogs. We probably just broke in and killed their guard puppies. Now I feel bad. So yeah, this guy basically warns us that there are some gnolls about. He calls them dog-headed creatures, but we know that that means gnoll. And then uh, also tells us that about Prism over to the uh, west, but of course we've already dealt with him. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Gal talk. I knew there was one more interaction. So he says somebody is after him. Who, precisely? Kobolds. Not to worry, we've dealt with plenty before. As shown there. They're not a concern. Unfortunately, Galtok runs off before actually giving us any sort of reward for protecting him, so... Thanks. Okay, and let's see here. Yeah, we cleared out the area. So let's see about going and dealing with... Well, we need to turn the quest in, and then turn those other quests in, and then we can head up to Old Caster. Alright, so we got 200 XP, which is the valuable thing, and 300 gold, which is useless to us, for bringing those gems back. I don't know if they fixed it, but back in the day, you could actually give only one of the gems back, and then you could sell the other. And I, these emeralds that were used are like 500 gold value each. It's 
pretty insane. Alright, and it's at night, so the smithy's closed, so we'll just stop into the inn. And we get stopped by a member of the law enforcement. And she says that uh, she's been cut off from, she and her contingent have been cut off from the city, the main city. And she's just offering to pay us a lot of money for bringing bandit scalps. Unfortunately, she doesn't give us XP for bringing bandit scalps. Ominous. But hey, we gained a new ability, uh, a second Cure Light Wounds. So that's very handy. Uh, now we have three once per day heals, which considering how little we have in the way of healing, since we can't use potions or anything, that is incredibly, incredibly useful. And we are still a ways away from the level up, unfortunately. Uh, n no medical man. Uh, the, the whole challenge is called a poverty challenge, so I can't use any equipment at all. I have to use just my fists, which is one of the reasons why you could only do this with a monk or a sorcerer. Um, a wizard requ would require spell scrolls to learn magic, whereas a sorcerer learns their magic innately. And a monk, whereas a, a warrior would have to have a, uh, a weapon to hurt creatures... A monk can deal damage with just their fists. So here Elminster has popped in uh, to just talk to us. Uh, we learn later he's actually friends or was friends with our foster father, which is why he's been checking in on us. Uh, Elminster is actually a practically mythic character in the Forgotten Realms setting. He's inc an incredibly powerful wizard. Um, but we don't really know who he is. So we basically, you know, wanted to hear more about our foster father, who we didn't really know a whole lot about. 
and you know learn what Gar- Elminster has to what wisdom he has to offer. Uh, unfortunately, he will not give it to us right now. So, so here's the smith. We're giving him the vial of liquid that the kobolds were using to damage the, to to uh, degrade the iron, and we gave it to him so that he can fiddle with it and potentially make iron that will not be susceptible to it. Now let's stop in at the temple. I want to see if they have the item I need. There's a quest item, which is... It's a quest item, but it's also just a generic item. And I need to find out if we can actually buy one. Yes, we can. So yeah, this is the same scroll that that guy at the carnival is selling for 500 gold. Here, it only costs 123 gold. So yeah, that guy at the fair was really just jacking up the price. But hey, money is practically worthless for us, so who cares, right? Right? No, it still hurts my soul to give him so much. But anyway, there is someone here. So for those of you who haven't seen the earlier streams, uh, this is Mutamen's garden. All of these people, these stone statues are, well, were people. Uh, Mutamen was a mage who had a bunch of basilisks with him that uh, turned people to stone. And we dealt with them a while ago. But while most of these are like cracked or damaged, so even if we used one of these scrolls on them, it wouldn't help them, this one we can interact with. So for helping her, we got 300 XP and plus one to our reputation. Not the biggest reward, but it's something. And our reputation is now... Let's see here. Where's our reputation? There it is. Heroic. We have maxed out our reputation. I don't know if that's the one that put us over or not, but our reputation is maxed. Alright, so let's go down to... I think this area is the one we need to go to. And then... Oh my word, I didn't clear this area out. Alright, well I'll do that real quick, because there's definitely things that we can fight in this area for some more XP. I think back when I went through this area the first time, I was very hesitant to draw any attention to myself that I didn't wasn't absolutely prepared for because I was still very weak at that point. There's actually a really good fight that I don't think it gives us a ton of XP, but it should give us a few hundred at least. It's normally one of the first fights I do when I play this game because it's you get three sets of really good armor for doing it. But of course, I wasn't a point of concern for me in this version, or in this uh, playthrough, because I can't use any of that armor. I swear there are fights in here. <laughs> There's some hobgoblins, uh, I want to say, over and around here. But uh, there should be some other stuff, too, just some wildlife. I know I've seen bears in this area before. Of course, the perimeter 
is always a little a little on the quiet side. As our character starts to get more speed boosts when he levels up more, this somewhat tedious uh, movement around the map will go a lot faster. Oh, this is actually the area. So, uh, Tama, the woman we just saved from being turned into stone. I don't remember why this has been confirmed, uh, but it's been confirmed through some source that that's actually her house. She was petrified for so long that her house has, like, sunk into the earth. So I want to say that this guy's a reference to Wolverine. I don't know that for certain, but his name is Bub Snicked. Bub being what Wolverine calls everybody all the time, and Snicked being the sound effect that they draw in the comics when he uh, shoots out his claws. So, plus there's the fact that he's saying he smells ogres on the breeze. So I think this is actually a reference to the X-Men. Uh, yeah, uh, Jazreel, uh, soloing as a monk that can't use any equipment, so I am just a single punch kicker by myself, without a blade or magic item to rely on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, based on the dialogue from this guy, that he is a reference to Wolverine. That's cool. I've, I've played this game a lot, and I've never actually noticed that uh, specific reference before. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Uh, difficulties on easy, uh, Jazrael. At this point, I feel like I could probably, uh, I could probably turn it up some, but I imagine that things are going to get a lot harder as we get further into the game. At this point, we're over leveled, and we're in early parts of the game because we we went around and we cleared all of the surrounding areas before we started on main story stuff, and as a result, we're level eight already. Uh, so things are pretty easy at the moment, but as soon as we start having to deal with mages and things like that, that actually have decent crowd control spells, I feel like we're gonna really suffer. So, this is just three members of the Flaming Fist, they're just the law enforcement, essentially, and they think that we're bandits. And, while we're not bandits, we're just going to be like... Sure, because it's a fight that we can get uh, good XP from. Oh gosh, I thought we got good XP from it. We got we're getting fifteen from each of these. That's that's disappointing. Thanks, Jasra.
I always think there's a bear in this cave. I don't know why, but every time I come in here, I get prepared for a bear fight, and there's never a bear in there. I know there's a cave somewhere uh, that there's a bear inside, but for some reason, I always think it's that one. Uh, green arcs, that... The poverty means that I can't use any items. Uh, I can't use any equipment, no potions, no scrolls, uh, unless it's a quest item. So, for example, this is just a random book I have that I got from a quest, uh, and I just haven't dumped it because there's nothing I can do with it. So I'm not too concerned. This is a quest item, that's a quest item, and that was a quest item. I don't know if I still need to keep it or not, but... At least in the past, when we first got it, it was a quest useful item. So I'm allowed to, you to pick up those sorts of things, but otherwise we just have to leave everything on the ground and just punch things to death. Which the big challenge of that is that there are certain creatures that can't be hit by non-magical weapons, which our fists do not become magical until we hit level 9, which is actually one level higher than the game will normally allow you to get to, uh, because there's an XP cap. Now, I do have an uncapper, so we can get to that level, to level 9, but it still takes a lot of XP, which is one of the big reasons why we've been going around grinding and getting all of the areas cleared before we pursue the main quest. As I was saying earlier, uh, Green Arcs, there's actually only two classes in the game that can do a poverty run successfully. Uh, that being the Sorcerer and the Monk. Uh, we're a Monk, obviously, but a Sorcerer could also do it because they're able to use... They learn their spells naturally. They don't have to pick up items to learn them, like a Mage does. So, they're the only two classes that can really do a poverty run. I'm, I'm not saying that you... I, I'll, I'll retract my statement that you they're the only two. Uh, they're just the only two that I can think of that would have any chance of doing it in a way that isn't excruciatingly painful. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to try doing it with any other class. Assuming you even could, which I have my doubts. Is there a way to get up there? Yeah, there is. Okay. Not that there was anything of value to get up there, but hey, at least we went up there. Oh, got ourselves a skeleton. And that is a dead end. Cool. I always forget how much wasted area there is in this specific zone. Just a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that's just a random little adventurer who doesn't like combat much. And it's a magical gem that he doesn't need, so he was trying to hawk it to us. If I remember correctly, either it's a cursed item or it's not valuable at all. One of the two. But for us, we don't even need to think about picking it up. That is a lot of skeletons. Not that they're very difficult, that is. A lot of the early combat of this game for this uh, type of run is very simple. Not a whole lot of strategy to it. Uh, we have Stunning Blow, which is a valuable little technique, but it's really only useful for foes that have a lot more HP than the guys we've been fighting. As a result, I haven't been bothering to use it much. I've started trying to because I genuinely keep forgetting about it, but it's not been of much use thus far. And yet another messenger. Not particularly exciting, but hey, it's there. We can't pick up any of that loot, but I know, at least in the past, you could get a pair of boots that were needed for a quest here. And I think they removed it because you're supposed to only be able to get one. There's another place you can actually get it as well. Alas, I think they removed it from this area and just stuck it in the other area. I would have thought we already did that quest, but we clearly didn't considering the last area we were in. Well, I say last area. That area right there. Uh, there was a whole lot of a whole lot of it that we had not seen yet, which means that we still had a fair bit of, uh, or we still had the the encounter where you get that item hidden or not encountered, whatever. There he is. So this is just a essentially mini boss fight. He can be quite, uh, oh dear. We can't hit him. That's, that's bad. I didn't realize that. Uh, this is an example of uh, why we need to be level 9 before we progress much further in the game. Uh, we actually just can't hurt him with our fists as it is right now. So I rolled a, let's see here, a 9 plus 19, which is an 18, which is a hit. So we would have hit him and dealt damage if it weren't for the fact that he's immune to non-magical weaponry. So we just have to run away from him. Which is really disappointing because he gives a decent little bit of XP if I remember correctly. Yeah. And he will just follow us. And as it is, there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. We can't 
I don't believe we can use Stunning Blow on him to try and get him to stop following us, because we'd have to be able to deal damage to him to actually have our Stunning Blow work. Could be wrong on that, but frankly, I don't want to try, because, well, it's not like it's going to provide much of a benefit for us. Now then, my question is, where is Olcaster? So these are the ruins of Olcaster, which was a fantastic school of magic back in the day. And the ghost of Olcaster wanders these ruins. And I am having a hard time finding him. He gives you a quest, so I would like to find him if I can. Because he will give me that juicy, juicy XP. Alas, I can't seem to find him. We'll just head on inside. We'll find him later. He might not be spawning because uh, Ikarid, the skeleton warrior that we can't hit, is rocking about. Which I hope is not the case, because that's going to put a real cramp on our uh, quest completion, but alas. And that is a creature we can't hit, correct? Well, who knows? We can't even hit it to begin with. Yeah, we can't hit that. That's unfortunate. So now we're starting to encounter a lot of creatures that require plus one weapons to hit, which we don't have. And, of course, it got the poison on us. That's really irritating. We will actually get a method of dealing with that later. Just not yet. character tried casting a healing spell there and it did not work because unfortunately uh, we were poisoned so the poison damage interrupted our spell but we can always just do a little uh that which we fortunately have two of ever since we got to the last chapter so What is with all these critical misses? This is terrible. Getting really unlucky. Well, that's irritating. That fireball killed that wolf before we could, which means we didn't get any XP for it. Oh, geez, that's a vampiric wolf. We can't hit that either, guys. I did not realize there were so many powerful creatures that we just couldn't deal with in this area.
There we go. That's what we came in here for, the Dusty History book. And now we just need to run like crazy so that that wolf and the jelly and any other horrible creatures that we can't hit can't get to us. I know that jelly's waiting for us to greet us on our way out. I don't know where he's waiting, but he's around. Eh, well, we made it out without having to deal with anyone else, so that's good. Unfortunately, Olcaster is still not visible. Let's see if we can take a nap and rest until day. See if that will have him show up. Oh gosh, the vampire wolf followed us out. That's that's awful. Fortunately, we're hidden, so it can't see us. And there's a Karid, who I also don't want to fight. Okay, let's 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 just leave the area. We'll come back later. Just put a a pause on that. We have the quest item, so all we have to do later is just come back when we can actually beat up Ikarid and the Vampire Wolf, Vampiric Wolf, and, uh, yeah, it, it'll be fine, he said, hoping. So why are we back in Baragost? Well, besides the fact that it's probably my favorite town, it's a good hub town, uh, there's also the quest that I didn't realize I never did that I was talking about a few minutes ago. Uh, let's see here. There he is. So he literally steals from our wallet with the oldest trick in the book. Oh look, it's Dritz Jordan! And then just scrams and we can't do anything about it either we can't you know smack him in the face i mean we can smack him in the face but uh yeah can't do anything about it he does however offer us 100 gold to whoever gets back his boots he bought some boots of stealth and then some hobgoblins came and took them from him classic story boy buys boots boy loses boots to hobgoblins brings a tear to the eye every time So now we just have to find them. I'm hoping we haven't already killed them and therefore lost access to them. I don't think that's the case, but that would really suck if it were true. Well, there's plenty of squirrels, so... We've got that going for us. Unfortunately, I don't think the squirrels are the ones that took his boots. Oh yeah, this is concerning. <laughs> I fear we may have messed this up and cannot complete this quest. I think the hobgoblins and the boots spawn before you accept the quest. So since we killed them, left the area, have had a nap and everything since then, it means that the boots that dropped in this area when we killed them have despawned. 
That sucks. Oh gosh. I'll check the right side of the map, but I'm pretty darn sure that that's what happened. I think we just mucked it up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think we can get the boots now. Shoot. Oh, well. Such is life, I guess. It's probably only a few XP, a few hundred XP we lost out on anyway. Still, that few hundred XP would get us all the closer to level 9. Oh, well. In the meantime, what else have we got to do? Uh, we've got Vi's Bounty Upon Bandits, which is not really a normal quest per se. Uh, completed those. We've got that all done. We've got Gersh Cloak to do, but we can't do that yet. That's a, something we can't do until we get further in the main story. So yeah. I think it's time to continue with the main story. I don't think there's much else we can get done. Let's stop in at the Thunderhammer Smithy to see if Fuerum has figured out anything with that uh, mysterious liquid. Yeah, so he has gotten for us Quality weapons. He's created quality weapons. These just won't break. Unfortunately, we can't use the weapons anyway, so it's not really a big deal. Not much help. But hey, it exists. All right, well, we've gotten everything done we can do right now as far as side quests go. We completed the Nashkel Mines. I think it's time for me to uh, say goodnight for the moment. Uh, I've just got... Uh, I don't feel like diving into more of the main quest right now, and I was planning on doing a shorter stream tonight anyway. So thank you to everybody who came out. I really appreciate it. As always, I really enjoy the user engagement. I love talking about the run. I love talking about the game in general. So if you want to catch the older videos or if you want to just uh, be able to catch up on other content that you may be interested in, I do upload all of my VODs over on YouTube at Karen Driel. Uh, same username as on here, only there's no underscore. So I appreciate it. Have a good one. And I will see you all next time. Peace.